Now, finally, we're live. Are we there? Yeah, we're there. Thank you for watching. We are so sorry for the late oh, start. Um, it it's it's yeah, it's been a busy, busy day. Busy, yes, busy, busy day. day. Yeah. Um, I usually have the whole show set up well in advance, and and I get Dutch Bros for us and. Is this the first time we've not... Look at his expression. Oh, my goodness. He's dragging because so he did, didn't get his Dutch bro. So sorry. So we are... We, we brought his new stethoscope. Dr. Gwayne, Ooh. for those of you who don't know who we are, we are Dr. Mark Vaughn and Dr. Gwayne Vaughn. So you, you've got it there. You can see who we are. Yep. Dr. Gwayne has been with the Auburn Medical Group for 10 years. Yeah. And if you don't believe me, it says thing. so on my stethoscope. It says so. Well, we may manage to get a, an extra cameraman here to zoom in on that. And <laughs> as you describe your new yeah. Echo, what's the name of this Echo stethoscope? Uh, 500. 500? Did they give it a number? Echo something 500. Yeah. Really? Okay. I so I, I've had videos in the past showing some of their stethoscopes that have amplifier built in or even the one that can do an EKG on your, your mobile phone. Well, this one takes it a step further. So when we saw that it was coming up on 10 years for Dr. Gwayne, we got an inscription on the chest piece yeah. of the new Echo super fancy electronic stethoscope. And we'll show you a little bit about it. You've been using it for a week now? Uh, almost that long. A little less okay. than that. Less than that. All right. Hey, we have comments, so let, let's get those in there. So Hilda Brower asks, are you related? Can't you see the similarities? I don't know. Do we no, have? No, I don't. Do not we, much. Do I don't think. I look, your, your older brother looks a lot like me. Yes. Yeah. And so my younger brother. Uncle and, and nephew, for those of yes. you who are wondering there. <laughs> and I'm still... Still really hoping that somehow we'll be able to get our monitor working yeah. today. We're and, riding blind here. And, uh, we think you can see us. I we, think you can see us. We, we think you see Can't what we look like. Can't check my hair in the... You're checking your hair. Yeah, you usually can check your hair in the, in in the, the, mon in the monitor. But, actually see. Yeah. So I apologize for getting here too late to get the monitor. In the, but we're glad to have you join us anyways. So, yes, Hilda, we, we are we are related. That That is true. Um, we are related. So we'll... Go ahead and get Hilda off there so our other comments and questions can get here just as Hilda well as Hilda's here. did. Including Lindsay. Lindsay was here too. Lindsay, yeah. one of our usual ones. And do you know what the title of our show refers to? Of course, we'll probably change the title after we do the show for people to come later. But for the live show, the title was... Uh, you told me it was how often do you think about... How often do you Robert think Michael? about... Robert? Because apparently the thing going around social media now is... How often do you think about the Roman Empire? Oh, I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Whatever. So, so how often do I think about the Roman Empire? Yeah. I, okay. Well, answer it since it's a question going around. <laughs> not that often. Yeah. My, Apparently, I'm not like one of those true guys on social media who are like, yeah, daily. Yeah. So my reply was, the, uh, it would be daily if I lived somewhere where um, I see the artifacts from it around me every day, like in Rome. I think how often do I? Certainly, you'd be more maybe, inclined. To maybe think about once a month. I, I'm sorry, I don't know the significance that, of the question. Yeah. yeah. I, I like, how often do you think about the Auburn Medical Group? How often do you think about the Auburn Medical Group? I think about that daily. Yeah. Except on weekends. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> it's great not working weekends. I love my outpatient job. Yes, it is great. Okay. Uh, some, some weekends I do too. Why don't working. we get some shots of your awesome stethoscope there? Sure. Are you going to get us a better Let's do that. visualization let's, of that? Let's switch Are the camera to Are we going to make it you. work? And so oh, can I can't see, see everything. I can't uh -oh. see the focus. <laughs> I can't turn it either. I'll show you if you're if I'm in focus. If okay. I if I put it right here, that I'm gonna zoom way in on it. Okay, We're zoom in. Totally oh, I gotta lift it up right there. Is it in focus? Oh, it's it's going to sleep. That's yeah, it. yeah, look, you can see it. So that's the uh, digital you, side. Why are you saying you can see it? I I can't it's see actually it. looks pretty. You're pretty good. I gotta move this way. Sorry. Okay. There. Right there. Oh, you're nope, not anymore. There, there. there. Okay. So there it is. So yeah, do some of your buttons or whatever. Yeah. Don't so that back. is. So this this side, uh, we can. Oh gosh, it's that's hard. hard. That's hard. Frame. Keep it in frame. Uh, is the listening side. So this goes up against the patient's chest, kind of right up against it. Just the um, Yep. Right up against it, uh, and it's got the normal diaphragm. 
So that's just for listening. Now you'll see that something's a little weird here. It's got an area where well, this is gonna be hard Let's to take it off. Hard to do take with. It off. Whoa. There you go. Yeah, so it's actually a uh, 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 electronic this way. There. Yeah, you listen to it through a three and a half millimeter connection. But anyways, that goes, and it's got a, a port to. Gosh, I keep moving here. This is hard to do. Uh, but anyways, so, so there is your listening side. So on the other side, you turn it around. This is the where the bell would normally be. A bell is like a smaller area for listening to a higher you get reflection on it. Yeah, sorry, I gotta try that. But if you push on it, you can do different. So there's different, there's uh, there yeah. smart books there. Stay up front. Lungs. Uh, gosh, it's, that's kind of hard to see. Yeah, that's we like, got a lot of lights in here. There, 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 there. There we go. So if you push on it, you can do different. So that's for listening to the heart, listening to the lungs, listening to both. It's if you don't want to switch back and forth. Got an area here where it'll li show you the beats per minute. Um, it's Bluetooth, so you can actually connect it to your phone yeah. um, and see everything. Now, the area that's really cool is on this side, these three things, those are actually um, leads for an EKG. So let's see. I wonder if we can do it, if I can put it on. You're going to have to change it because I can't get my chest up I'm gonna, that area. Oh, we're going to put it on there. Right. Okay, I'll, I'll try to get the let's camera on Let's see it. if I can. Okay, I'm... Get a good I'm going to try to get the camera on the display but, in focus. Oh, yeah, folks. try it. You got it. Okay. Because I got a good reading going here. I think. It's got a good reading. It's oh, got to hold it. There we go. It's, it's got down. a little check check mark when it's getting a good reading. Oh, maybe not. Seriously, I have zero monitor this week. So, mm, you're just. Can you tell me left or right? And then I. Oh, there you go. Right there. Now go in. Go straight in from there. Straight in from there. No, that's as far as we can go. Oh, okay. But now let's get it in it. focus. Oh, it's analyzing right now, but anyways. I don't know so, if that's a focus. Yeah. It's analyzing, telling me what my, it's a poor signal currently, because I, let's see if we can try that again. There we go. Can you see? No. Uh, no, sorry. What, what happened? Get me in focus. Can you see? There you go. Uh, it's got an EKG on it. Can you see, see that? that? There you go. Can it's you see It's that? hard to keep a good... Seal while Look looking, at that. looking away. Right on the stethoscope. Well, it's, it's, it's a bad You got a lot of bad artifact. Connect. That's what's wrong with your heart. Well, you have a lot yeah. of artifact. I'm trying to. Oh, that was a good. Oh, oh, oh I'm oh, flatlining. Oh, oh, I, got, I lost it. Here, chest compressions. I, I can't do it while well, it's stay. Is it gonna? I, I won't. Oh, you got a choice. You can either have a heartbeat or be in focus. That, that's which, what you know. Those are my which, two choices. Which is it? I choose. Heartbeat, I guess. Yeah, it's hard to keep everything because usually I am. Oh, there we go. Oh, I was getting a good reading. I'm really proud of that thing, actually. Oh, did no, you show no, them the inscription? I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, and then let's. I'll, I'll focus it on the inscription if you can hold it forward. Go yep, down. Can you see that? Uh, there it we go. Should be right there. Yeah, it says. I don't know if you can read it. Doctor Gwaine, ten Dr. years. Dr. Oh, there Gwaine, you go. Ten years. There you go. We Dr. can put Wayne it back years. together here. There you go. That. Works a lot better when you're not doing it on yourself, looking at, away at a camera, but there it is. Pretty cool. You're cool. <laughs> so, uh, thus far, um, my yeah. Yeah, impressions. Yeah. It's, um, so, I guess the downside is it... it it's an electronic connection, so you can't just take it off and throw it on if, a patient's if the chest. Runs out, you're... Yeah, and if you you literally can't hear anything, but it's not like a normal to... normal scope. I'll keep talking as as we go all over the place. Well, uh, so so that part's tough. You got to actually turn it on, push a button. Um, it's not that big of a deal to take this off my neck and, and turn it on. Um, it's. It, you can you can do it on over um, regular you know clothes as well, but then you don't get the connection, so you can't get the EKG function of it if you do that. But you can listen to normal sounds, and actually, even with listening to normal sounds, it'll analyze it and um, give you like let you know if there's an irregularity, like AFib, tell you how many beats per minute. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, thus far. I have been pleased with it. it. It works really well. It, it um, you can adjust the sound. So as I get older, I guess I can turn up that sound. So, <laughs> so, so I will not be. 
Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I wonder if it'll yeah, it'll do power. a. Let's see if I can just have it analyze. Are you trying to get the EKG through the? No. Or no, trying to have it listen? To it. If I can't talk. That's a problem. Because it's hearing me talk. But anyways, it'll analyze it and tell it if it's a, tell me if it's a regular rhythm, if it's, there's a murmur detected or anything like that. So, yeah. And you cool. showed them how you can just use if you've got like ear earbuds, you can use. Yeah. So you can connect to it. You can, and it actually brings it up on your phone. So you could technically just keep that around. Disconnect. Oh, you gotta push. It. Yeah, turn and then pull. Turn and then pull so many. Yeah. So you could just walk around with this in your pocket. To bring up the. Uh... Will it go directly to the headphones, or do you have to have a phone connected? You may need to have the phone connected. So there's going to be a little bit of I, delay. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of latency. Like right with now, the, you can see on the like, phone, it's. Oh, you want to, want me to do mine? Sure. Oh, actually, I can't do it through the T-shirt, but. Sure. Um, right now we're getting the uh, these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's got three areas where it, it's getting the EKG. It's, it it's um, not on his, but it's trying. I think that was a beat. There's a beat. There's a beat. Now we're getting a good. There we go. Uh, 55 beats per minute. 54. That sounds about right I'm for you. I'm super excited. Yeah, that that is you being crazy. This is um, wild. So it's recording. Hold still. Still? Still? Hold still. All right. So, yeah. It does not. I, and you can see kind of that love dub. So if we, oh, it's, it's analyzing. analyzing. No abnormalities. Yes. <laughs> so I'll tell you. How many years do I have? If there's abnormalities on it or not. Yeah. So it's just right there. No murmur detected. Oh really? Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh, you can select the position it was on. Okay. So it knows oh, how no, to adjust the. Uh, yeah. The way. Uh, Based on where that was. Processes tell the, you. the the signal right. according to where yeah. it thinks the. I can I can button. So like, pretty so. neat. Put myself back together here. Okay, let's let's look. Oh yeah, we got some good comments here. We're we're gonna get to let's your comments and talk. questions. We have. There we go. Okay, we have. Well, yeah, Susie's saying hello. Oh, and do you do the whole telemedicine thing? Do we do the yes. whole? Yes, we the do the whole thing. But the whole thing. We, but we don't have Not with anybody yeah. at home. We using would need one of these. to. Yeah. That'd be cool. You could. You, you, so you could technically have a patient at home with this. And some people are starting to get those and have have them. Um, Put it on their chest, and you'd be able to hear it remotely. It'd be possible. You'd have to really have them, you know, know where to put it. It's not that hard. You could probably instruct them. It, I, we we have some programs where we pay closer attention to people who have chronic health problems, and some money is paid for that. I could imagine a little adjustment in how the payments are done to get something like this. It's not too unlike RPM. Right. Yeah. Um, the, 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 there's got to be a way you can do something. It's more expensive than just a blood pressure cuff, but something that's a little more. We're we're close. Uh, it, remote, it's it's just a matter yeah. of making it affordable. Yeah. You know where do you draw the line between um, how much does it cost and how much you're going to get out of it? And, yeah. And we're just, I I feel like for how much this costs, and how much they pay for RPM, that we're really close. Sure. To yeah, patients yeah, being yeah. able to send in their heart sounds and their EKG from home. Uh, for or not, not for everybody, things. but for people who are like on higher risk, who, yeah. somebody who's seen a cardiologist, for example, right. because the, yeah, higher risk. Okay, so yeah. that's that question. And then Lindsay asks, or does Comments. she says this is like a Star Trek stuff? Yes, she's referring to the tricorder or the medical tricorder. Was they just scan you? Is that what the little that round was... thing is that McCoy has? It's called a medical tricorder because the tricorder was like the little tape recorder box. That get, Spock get, carried around. Oh gosh. And then they had the medical one that would work with it that had a... Trekker. Yeah. <laughs> we prefer Trekker. <laughs> okay. And then Rusty says, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Thank you, Rusty. I don't Let's know do if that. we have one on our end, do we? Yeah. Thumbs Hi. up to Hi. you, audience. <laughs> we think two, two we, thumbs up. We think you deserve a thumbs up. Uh that's cool. We and you can also that. do those things like super chat. And I think oh, there's a yeah. way to do, yeah. like, make hearts go on the screen. Ooh. Somebody knows how to do it. I think it's been done before. Maybe I'm thinking of another uh, social media besides just YouTube. But yes, thank you, Rusty. We appreciate that. Yeah. So you're using this currently. Sometimes when people try new technology like this, they find themselves slipping back to the old one. Have you, have you 
picked up your old stethoscope, your old sound stethoscope, since starting to use this? A week Not ago? no. I, I actually put that in a put it away. It's in a for now. It's in a, a shelf for like yeah. when one of your kids becomes a medical so, we'll professional. And yeah, there you go. Hand that on. So Post here's the, here's a great story. When I got into medical school, um, my first two thousand four. In 2004, um, you have to get a stethoscope. And, and usually you'll get that the first week of school or something. They'll put the orders and anything like that. I had one already. And the reason was, when I graduated um, college, uh, someone bought me one. So the, the only two stethoscopes that, cool. that, I've, ever, that, uh, cool. that I, I've ever owned I mean, have been bought by you I'm really for, happy about for that. me. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And then he works with me. Yeah. We're twinsies. Okay. <laughs> Oh, oh, we're not caught up with comments. I'm no, sorry. there's more. But wait, there's Laura more. Laura Barzik, of course. We can't. Laura. You're, you're cool. No, you're that cool. Is, that is so cool. It is so cool. Yeah, and Hilda Bauer says, my Samsung phone does O2 pulse. Yeah. Heart rhythm for my finger sensor. Yeah, a lot of watches will give you watches will a, a, lot a there. single lead EKG. The advantage of this is you can actually turn it around to get yeah. different leads. So the different leads you the can. The watch just does, I think, a lead two, I would guess. I think so, yeah. It would just be... That would be lead one going across. Yeah. One. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. Anyways. Yeah. One, two. It's it's <laughs> it's. Lead. And then Hilda, uh, what do you think of robotic surgery? Interesting that you should ask that, uh, robotic Hilda. Robotic surgery. Because how many when robots? we go over to the hospital for lunch at the physician lounge, because it's free. <laughs> free food. Free cold cuts. Except <laughs> mine is the tomato and cheese sandwich because I, I don't like eating meat, but. <laughs> They always have tomatoes now, ever since I complained. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. And a fizzy water. The hospital, we get to see the surgeons. And oftentimes we'll talk to them, uh, specifically the one who talks the most about robotic. Well, actually, both Dr. Um, Bradshaw and Dr. Antonini talk about using the robot. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and it functions kind of like an assistant. Sure. And they say that the surgery is better mm -hmm. for the patient and it requires less hands right in where they're working so uh there, there's less going on with uh, yeah. as far as manipulation uh yeah. yeah yeah it's it's the person who's who's operating who's using it they, they really like it yeah their complaint they do have a complaint about robotic surgery their complaint is room turnover right yeah yeah were you it, there when one of them was yeah, complaining about right that? right because um they don't have a bunch of those that they can just switch out and it's gone through a surgery so it's got to be completely cleaned off so, so they have to that limits take all the drapes off of it and put new time. ones on, and yeah. and it's it's keeping them from turning over the room. If you're not familiar not with this, quickly. I think people are familiar with the room turnover. I would turnover. imagine. So, yeah, yeah. You know, taking one down, preparing. How, how long it takes to get the next case in there is 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 long, and so it's using up valuable OR time that you know doctors are trying to schedule their cases. So that's that's the downside. Not not anything medical. Yeah. Right. Okay, and then. Susie says, I'm contemplating driving up there. You seem to actually care about your patients. Well, I'm a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> we talk a big game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We do care about our patients. The tough thing yeah. is people yeah. see that and there are only two of us yeah. and yeah. only a certain number of um, well, well, PAs and nurse practitioners. Say, so it, it, we are... We are limited. Our, um, in it's not these hands; it's the hands of our, our nurse practitioners and yeah. the physician assistants who are seeing the new patients. And, and of course, you know, we, we barely get to get in here because we're out with them uh, in the patient rooms with them, yeah. helping them to give the best care uh, because that's what we're about here. And it limits how much we can get done. That's that's the thing. We can only right. get so many people in for the amount of attention that we give. Yep. Which is why we're trying to hire more nurse practitioners and physician assistants. So that we can better use the resources we have. Because so get the word out. There are two of us. Not you just have one. A, a good doctor that you really enjoy. Tell oh yeah. Him, tell them that, or we would tell him or her another doctor. Come our way. Yeah. <laughs> and they can help us to supervise our wonderful PAs go. and nurse practitioners, yeah. to whom we're at. I just interviewed a PA just just before coming in here. All so, right. Drew, if for some reason you're watching, this is the show <laughs> that I talked about. There you go. Drew from Tennessee. Okay, moving on to comments. We've got Lindsay saying, that's the clout that comes with being a doctor. You say you want tomatoes, tomatoes. She's so right. I complained about running out of tomatoes I, and 
Well, I think your comment Dietary was... Dietary service responded with tomatoes. You called and said, hey, I need tomatoes. Please get some. And if you find me on the side of the road, you only have yourself to blame. Or something like that. I think it, that your comment was okay. something like... No, the tomatoes would... Oh, or was that about the... That was either that's a phone the, call or an email follow-up to that phone call. Oh, the phone call was about multigrain bread. Oh, I was. And I yeah. said, if I'm dead on the side of the road, it's because I didn't get multigrain bread. <laughs> As if yeah. you're gonna have like a multigrain bread deficiency while you're running. Sorry. When not enough fiber, <laughs> you got constipated to death. I was gonna say, when you're running, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I All right, had that see, issue in a long time. Um, what is it? Because you're not running, or you're not no, running I'm running to the airport. Uh, so, Susie, do you have patients? that are having trouble regulating blood sugar after having COVID. Interesting. That sounds like a long That I've not thing. come across that. But uh, almost anything seems to be potentially a description of something that people notice going on after COVID. Well, here's the good news. Post-COVID issues, whatever yours is, if it really is caused by the virus, most of it goes away given enough time. Yep. Very, very few people continue to have it for a super long time. But as far as the symptoms, man, just, it's the wastebasket. Anything yep. that happens afterwards, we're scratching our head going, well, would this have happened if they didn't have COVID? Don't know. Usually if it's post-COVID, it's something that continues after COVID, not something that shows up later, most often. I'm not gonna make an absolute statement there. Yeah. And here's the other interesting thing about it. I think we've said this on the show before, that all these symptoms like it's fatigue. Not, yeah. Uh, that that people go, you know, this has been happening ever since they had COVID and it just hasn't gone away. Well, we've had people who have had these vague symptoms all along before COVID. And we're always, it, it's getting attributed to different things. Around here, the popular thing to, to try to blame it on is Lyme disease. And I'm not saying that people yeah. don't have symptoms after they've had Lyme disease, but a lot of searching for and asking for a Lyme disease test that, that comes across the when we're having visits with patients really that's most likely not it and in fact may be more likely to give you a false positive than a real positive if you've never right. been bitten by a tick for example uh, because Lyme disease is transmitted mostly after the tick has been on for days not not a single bite and then they come off it's just the way the statistics work out so we're, we're not really big on blaming everything on Lyme disease that comes across, but we think that other viral illnesses, upper respiratory viral illnesses, may have just as much potential for the long COVID yep. symptoms as COVID does. So maybe it's more of a post-viral thing going on that we're seeing, because when in history have we seen this many people infected? All get it at once. With yeah, yep. with with a, <coughs> an upper respiratory viral infection like this. So that's right. possibly what's going on. I take pride in saying possibly and not giving absolutes and not saying one hundred percent. We hedge because one. we should have been radiologists. Because we we have patients who come in who tell us the way it is, uh, and we don't agree with them, but they're absolutely sure. And we we come back with you know what, we're just not that bold to say that we know absolutely for sure, but we're pretty sure you're wrong. <laughs> When they're giving us the conspiracy theories and some of those, yeah, stuff that yeah, off the, they're absolutely off the sure things. about it. They didn't go to medical school. Um, they, they really haven't had much time in the scientific literature compared to a doctor who's been in practice for 20 years. So, I don't know, maybe I'm being arrogant. <laughs> maybe I'm the one who's being arrogant. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Were you in a VR not even in the same room? Scary. Were, were, where you are in a VR... Uh, sorry, this is all a simulation. Is referring back to a similar, yeah. All of this is talk, a simulation. Talk to Elon, please. Okay, Susie, long COVID. Susie Rehnquist, I've had it twice. I was uh. off all diabetic meds prior for almost four years. This sounds like a friend of mine, actually. Got COVID in 2019 and Omicron in 2022. COVID in 2019, that's, that's... That's uh, almost superhuman. Yeah, before, <laughs> before we really knew it was COVID. Before it was even in China. I, I haven't been able to get it under control, seriously, all over the place. And then, Susie, I have some med education experience. Okay. I do, too. So, uh, yeah, we, we have these yeah. frustrating symptoms. A, a lot of I've people... I've had some people have some um, 
difficulty controlling their diabetes after COVID. I know COVID. somebody who's had... Yeah, That's I know not somebody a, Not knows. unusual, yeah. yeah. And he doesn't even have any medical background. Strange. So, yeah. Yeah. There you go. So thank you so much for yep. showing us your new... Yeah. Echo. You said... You, you knew the name, the 500 or? The Core 500. The Core 500. So I, I have it. the Core. It says, it says on it. But it doesn't have all, <laughs> it doesn't have the display. Yeah. And it doesn't have the and, EKG. That's my other one that has the EKG. I forgot the name yeah. of that one. Pretty neat. Cool. Well, thank you. And yeah. thank you uh, for your comments and questions and for everything you do to help give us, especially Lindsay Antwine, because she gives money. So <laughs> that's why I say especially you, her. You, you, you too. Can, you can get mentioned too or have your name in the thing. If you do Patreon, they'll be in the place it, right here somewhere. It'll be there in a moment. So, <laughs> till next time, I'm Dr. Wayne Vaughn. Dr. Mark Vaughn telling you to stay in good health. Doctors, thank you for another informative session. Auburn Medical Group is located in Auburn, California, USA. Thank you for participating. Please tell a friend and join us again next week.